Welcome to the Top Business Leader Show, powered by Rise 25 Media. We feature top founders, executives, and business leaders from all over the world. Chad Franzen here, co-host for this show, where we feature top restaurateurs, investors, and business leaders. This is part of our Spot On series. Spot On has the best-in-class payment platform for retail, and they have a flagship solution called Spot On Restaurant, where they combine marketing, software, and payments all in one. They've served everyone from larger chains like Dairy Queen and Subway to small mom-and-pop restaurants. To learn more, go to spoton.com. G. Patel is a serial entrepreneur from the early age of 17. He's launched over a dozen companies with experience in launching over two dozen hospitality brands, spirits, retail, and various startups. G, thanks so much for joining me today. How are you? Good, Chad. Thanks for having me. So tell me a little bit more about Echelon Experiences and kind of its history. Yeah, sure. Um, so, um, you know, I started an events and marketing company while I was at the university, um, you know, doing three jobs and going to college at the same time, just wasn't going to cut it. And uh, that kind of transitioned to my love for the hospitality industry. So as I was graduating and I made my senior thesis project to uh, write a business plan for, for a nightclub. So leverage kind of all the individuals that were, um, you know, working on my team to write a plan that would kind of really help come to uh, make Mondry Lounge to fruition. Um, so it was the first shisha bar or hookah bar in North Carolina um, through my travels and just obviously upbringing in overseas. I felt that could be a, kind of my way in. Um, so built the first bar, I would call it from ground up, really kind of took understanding of how the mechanical works, plumbing works, electrical works, municipalities, you name it. Um, I kind of learned it um, from that standpoint. And uh, that really got going. Um, I thought I got pretty good at it. And I was like, okay, well, what's next, right? I mean, at this point, we're only selling alcohol and shisha. And at which point we kind of discontinued the shisha because we learned the uh, life cycle of our customers. Um, how, how quickly can you turn the table, as they say, right? And shisha's last hours and hours. So I'm like, okay, we gotta, get, we gotta rotate these. So we nipped that in the bud and I really just focused on the spirits and alcohol side of it. Um, I ran that for about a year and a half. I uh, did a pretty good exit. Um, and uh, I, my wife and uh, I at that time, um, she was in Charlotte and I was in Raleigh. So obviously every time she visited me, I would try to take her to a nicer restaurant so she would marry me at some point. <laughs> and so which we did, obviously we have two beautiful kids now. And uh, we ended up going to uh, this uh, sushi restaurant. And you know, growing up uh, in India, um, I didn't really have access to seafood much. So I would always eat the you know their house salad with chicken so the one time the uh, the owner comes to me and is like hey did you come here a lot you know your wife and you never never order sushi i'm like and i told him and kind of got to know him from that standpoint and um and i told him i'm looking to start a restaurant venture didn't really have any formal training in the hospitality industry although i grew up working in the hotel business um so um, obviously, you know, one thing led to another and uh, he's like, well, I'll be willing to sell this to you, uh, which was kind of perfect for me, right? Not having an experience and not understanding how to set up the line, um, hiring, firing, SOPs, all those things that come with it. Um, I'm a ripe age of 21 at this time, buying this multi-million dollar restaurant. And um, it, it was a perfect fit, right? Because it kind of came with uh, all the tools and the belt. I just had to sharpen them up. So bought the restaurant, it was doing about 1.5. And obviously, you know, I could have done a better job doing my due diligence and having the attorneys and the staff on point, but you're 21, who needs all that, right? You know everything. Um, <laughs> so um, I, I bought that and then uh, rather quickly learned the numbers were fudged a little bit. And so I had no choice but to increase the top line revenue. So started putting my marketing tactics in place and took the restaurant from 1.5 to 3 million in less than a year and a half. Um, and then really also learned the restaurant business at the same time. Um, and then from that, um, I really got affinity to being in the hospitality business. So partner up with my chef over there um, to open up my first brick and mortar downtown Raleigh, which was my first built from ground up, you know, where just gravel to uh, within inside of a core building it used to be a former Hudson Belk. So built that, and then two, I was like, okay, well, what, what's next, right? And I studied overseas in England, and I really liked the pub concept, and gastropubs were kind of 
up and coming at that time. This is back in 2006, 2007. Um, there's a restaurant that had been beautifully built, spent millions of dollars on it. They just didn't have any operational skill sets. So took a $3 million restaurant that had closed that put another capital investment of quarter million dollars and that had an 8,000 square foot amazing restaurant. And um, so two turned into three. And then from there, just kind of kept building new brands, really didn't uh, look to get into, you know, franchising or any other models because um, brand creation and brand development and uh, building things from ground up was kind of where my passion uh, really lied now that I look back to it. Um, so through that endeavor, you know, probably did, not probably did close to over 20 concepts, right? Um, all different types, variations from cocktail bars, nightclubs, fusion of nightclub restaurants, uh, American grills, sushi restaurants, you name it. Um, I've, I've done it. Wow. So how many, uh, how many restaurants are currently um, within um, your, your portfolio right now? So actually, uh, to, to be fully transparent, um, a few years back, I kind of started whittling down. And then with COVID, there was five operations at that time. And I, I closed five of those. So currently, I only have two operating um, and uh, underneath my ownership. Which ones are those? Uh, Haymaker, uh, which is a cocktail bar. And just, you know, it, it was a, it was a, I would call it a passion project, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um and then Killjoy, which is another cocktail bar um, with small plates. And that was supposed to open up March of 2020 on, on the 26th. And obviously on the 17th, we got a kibosh with COVID. So uh, luckily we survived that and it's operational and healthy and uh, it's moving forward. That's good. Very good. So you said you you you, uh, you were in college and you had three jobs. Were, were, were any of those jobs in the restaurant industry? Um, yes, one. And that was busing tables at Sweet Tomatoes. Okay. So that was, uh, I would say that's the only formal experience I had in the hospitality business. So you, you, know, you were really young and you, you, you had kind of some ups and downs, but largely you've been very, very successful. What, what do you think, you know, why did you have these instincts, you know, besides just your experience busing tables that made you successful in the restaurant industry? Well, um, I, I think for me, it was, I always looked at everything from a business perspective. Right. Uh, hence, I still have my hands in variety of from dozens of different businesses because um, I've always looked at it from uh, not just, OK, I, I make really good food or I oh, have a really amazing ambiance is having the ability to understand all spectrums uh, of a business. And a lot of times restaurant is a, it's a big conglomerate, it's a big business. Right? And having the understanding of how to operate the, the financials, the HR, or the, the training, the building of that. And, you know, from a food standpoint, I mean, I, I wasn't ever trained from a culinary um, you know, expertise standpoint, but I, I knew individuals who were, right? So placing them and giving them right tools to succeed is what really created success for us. So what do you think you do um, with relation to, you know, the, the business aspect for restaurants that kind of sets you apart? Um, we, we looked at it from a whole, I mean, before experience became experiences, right? I mean, before mm -hmm. it was just, okay, here's food, and here's that. And you look back to about, you know, 15, 20 years ago, that's when the experiential start standpoint started really coming in. And for us, we looked at everything from a holistic standpoint, not just, okay, they serve amazing food, but from the aesthetics, the food presentation, the ambiance, and then the how, uh, how we engage with our guests, right? Uh, when we created this guest bill of rights, and please do not ask me to recite those, but I mean, everybody was um, required to remember those. I mean, I know where our core values were, but we really created a strong foundation and a, and a culture around the organization. How do you, what, what, um, what other kind of uh, businesses or industries are you also in as an entrepreneur? Ooh, um, so I've been in a lot of tech startups, um, still in a couple of them. Um, I'm in oil and gas field, um, in uh, real estate development. Um, uh, my, I think a lot of my focus right now is, uh, from an F&B standpoint, is on the ghost kitchen side. Um, so I became an advisor and investor in uh, uh, Hub Kitchens, uh, which is an amazing new startup by Jason Johnson. And then I've been kind of just really taking all the tools that I've accumulated over the last two decades and helping them re-engineer and, you know, figure out how do we make this thing scalable. So we got our first contract to go into um, the RDU airport, 
uh, in conjunction with Reef, and we plan on expanding that. And uh, we'll be taking a back seat. He'll be on the front, but uh, yeah. How do you uh, do? You approach um, you know your your hospitality businesses different than you approach you know some of these other ones that are you know in different types of industries, or do you approach them all the same? Um, you know, honestly, one thing I can say is the hospitality business has really kind of shaped up. Um, my ability to uh, okay, let, let, let's reverse real quick, right? Being a hospitality business, you have to be able to control multiple variables at in a constant s- second, right? And when I look at the other ventures or other verticals of business that I'm in, you're you're managing one constant, you're managing one variable, right? Over here, you got, okay, my food cost has gone up. My limes, you know, there's a big thing going on in Mexico and our limes are cost labor shortage. I mean, it's just, it's constant, right? It's just, Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, simplest way to put it is like, you have all the plates that you're rotating. You're not just juggling three balls, right? I mean, you got five plates in the air and you better be able to catch them. You know, you, uh, you talked a little bit about how COVID kind of, uh, impacted you. Can you, can you kind of expand on that? Maybe tell me how, where, where you were, um, you know, in March of 2020 and then how uh, Echelon Experiences looks now? Yeah. Um, so at March of 2020, I mean, I, I was kind of already transitioning slightly out. Um, I, so I would say in 2012, 2013, I had a full C-suite, uh, C-suite team, essentially. I had a CEO, CFO, you, you name it. Um, I'm an entrepreneur by heart, right? Uh, so for me, it's like I like to get things formulated get it moving, then I'll move on to the next one. So the hospitality company was kind of built to do that. And after I went on to kind of start my other venture, which was the Social House Vodka, it really took a kind of a, uh, a hit, right? And uh, no fault of anybody's, but I always believed in cultivating growth from within, right? But so, but if I'm the engineer who's cultivating the growth, if I'm not present, then that kind of stops right there, right? Um, so it, it after a while, you know, obviously we kind of started selling off restaurants and closing off the ones where the leases were going. And uh, back in, I'll say 2019, 2019, 2020, we had about six operations going on. And I was kind of tying out myself because I wanted to get more of the development side of um, things anyways. So... And when 2020 came, obviously, we kind of put pause on the restaurants that we had. And we were able to get, okay, because we didn't know where the end was. I mean, I I think that we're finally, I'm going to cross my fingers, knock on wood or whatever to say. Mm -hmm. I think we're finally coming out of it. Um, So at that time, and the uncertainty, um, I just felt it was the best time to really, you know, stop the losses, stop any bleeding that might incur and say, okay, let's just have a clean break. It's easier to do that when trying to, you know, stretch things along. I think uh, as entrepreneurs in the hospitality business, a lot of times we're so invested emotionally, right? Where we don't, where we can't just cut the cord and say, okay, that's done, right? With a lot of other things we can, but because of the nature of the hospitality business, we just get so emotionally attached to it to the point you become delusional. You think that you can still make things work when you, you it's when you look at just paper, it's, clear right if i was evaluating somebody else's business then if i looked at their pnl it's like okay you're out of your mind cut cut the loss it goes go to the next what milestones are you particularly proud of uh, regarding your um hospitality ventures what milestones oh, that's a great question um i mean honestly i think i would probably say the third restaurant would be a great milestone that i can really reflect back to and remember in a specific moment um, and the analogy that uh, I've always referred to is, you know, when you have one restaurant, it's that's your sheer focus, right? So if, uh, let's just say if, if something catches on fire, you're there, you can put it out. When you have two, you can assess it. You know, it's like, okay, well, I'm, I'm, ha- I'm going to put this one, I'm, I'm going to put this fire out, I'm going to go to the next one. When you put add the third one to the mix, things just get really complicated, right? And just like anything else, when you're scaling, uh, I think three is kind of the magic word after three. I, I feel like the eighth, eighth one is where you really have to start putting the systems in place and start creating um, economy of scale. Um, 
But uh, I think from a milestone standpoint, I would say, you know, when we hit that first $10 million in revenue, I was like, oh, you know, it's in my early mid 20s. It's a pretty good milestone. Yeah, I, I would say so. I would say so. You know, for somebody who got into it so young and was at a high level so so young, was there? Did you make any mistakes that ended up being a you know a big learning experience for you along the way? How much time do we have on this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, uh, I, I'm I'm a I come from a school of hard knocks, right? I'm mm-hmm. not having a formal training or being uh, mentored under somebody who's. Uh, uh, you know, they're, I'm, where I'm their predecessor, I've made so many mistakes, so many mistakes. But those mistakes were, uh, I mean, the, the biggest learning tool that I, I could use. Um, and there's not one specific at the moment that, mm. that sticks out, but we constantly re-engineered anything that came up and we saw that as the issue. Um, you know, we were really diligent in consistently evaluating and being on top of our PL on a weekly basis. And that, and we didn't implement that until when we were just doing it on a quarterly basis. And we went to monthly. It's like, why are we, why are we doing this to ourselves? Right. This is the bloodline of our business. We should know every single penny where it's moving. You, you, uh, you have a lot going on outside of the hospitality industry. Do you have any, any plans or goals um, within the hospitality industry moving forward? So, I mean, yes, um, I, I think where I'm positioned now is really to help individuals who are looking to get into the hospitality business and then set them up for success, right? My length of time I was in it and the information and the knowledge I was able to retain, I want to shorten that curvature for any other individuals that's getting into it, right? I mean, I have gigs of data and Excel sheets and process and procedures that I'm always more than happy to give that to somebody who's looking to get started, right? So not making these small errors or mistakes that most of the time you make when you get into it as you're a hospitality entrepreneur. So for what my vision is to really, um, on the real estate development side, when an individual comes in, really set them up for success, not just, okay, well, they're going to be my tenant, they're going to pay me rent, and we'll call it a day, right? Because their dream allows me to continue my dream. Uh, last question for you. How can people find out more about uh, what you have going on with Echelon Experiences? Um, the best way to honestly is reach out through me um, on my uh, website, which is uh, helper at gpreneur.me. Well, I'm sorry. I gave you my email. Let me, let me <laughs> That's recap okay. that. It's just, uh, this is gpreneur, letter G-P-R-E-N-E-U-R dot me, M-E. Okay, great. Hey, uh, it's really been great talking to you. I appreciate your time and your thoughts and your insights. Appreciate it. Thank you. So long, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Top Business Leaders Show, powered by Rise25. Visit rise25.com to check out more episodes of the show and to learn more about how you can start your own podcast.